Welcome to the Beanbag Isotopes Virtual Lab, where we're going to talk about relative abundance and how to calculate a weighted atomic mass for the beanbag atom. Here we have a bunch of beans, and these beans represent the different isotopes for our beanbag atoms. And we're going to label this atom BG for beanbag. You can see that there are a variety of types of beans here. So first, we need to sort the beans into three different isotopes, one, two, and three based on their type. Once we get them sorted, you need to count how many of each BG isotope there is. After that, we're going to go ahead and measure the total mass of each group of isotopes. After that, we'll be able to figure out the weighted atomic mass for BG element. So here we go. I have sectioned them out for you into our three different isotopes. Let's look at number one. Can you count how many of that isotope there is? Did you come up with 70 atoms of BG1? That's excellent. Now let's count beanbag isotope 2. 36, you say? That's what I counted. And now finally for the third BG isotope. 31. That's what I got. So in your portfolio, you should have this same data table. And let's go ahead and put in the number of atoms that we got for each of the three BG isotopes. So isotope 1 was 70, 2 was 36, and 3, 31 atoms. For a total number of atoms for our BG element in this particular lot was 137 atoms. Excellent. Then... We needed to move on to massing BG isotope 1. So there they are on the balance. And I've blown the balance scale up for you so that you can read it. Remember, this balance carries all of its measurements out to three places past the decimal. Can you tell me what the mass of this bunch of isotope is 20.660 you say excellent now on to BG isotope number two we can see this mass is a bit larger for this isotope do you know what that mass reads 23.350 excellent and finally, for BG isotope number three, we can see that this is the lightest of all the isotopes coming in with a tiny mass of 4.780 grams. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So we want to record those now into that same data table. There's no need to total that mass. You need to know how many grams each isotope sample was, and that is it. So this is all of the data that need be collected for us to move on. The first thing we need to do is to calculate the average mass for each of our BG isotopes. And we're going to carry that average mass to the hundredths place. So 
two places past the decimal. And I need you to show your work by typing it all in to your portfolio on this exact slide. We can do the first one together. So here we are in our portfolio. And here's where we're going to type in our work. In order to figure out the average mass, okay, we need to take the total mass of the atom. So for BG1, we said that was 20.660. just remove that underline and we need to divide that by the total number of atoms which was 70 so we're going to end up with quite a small number here and that came out to be 0 0.295 0.295. However, we want to make sure that we are carrying this out to the hundredths place. So we're going to do some rounding. So this five would round that nine up, which inevitably rounds the two up. So actually this rounds to 0 0.30 grams. That means each individual bean has a relative mass of 0 0.30 grams. Now, I would like you to do the average mass of BG isotope 2 and BG isotope 3. I'll wait. I'm just going to type my answer up here. Once you have all of those average masses calculated and filled in in the data table above, we need to think about the percent abundance. This number tells us, using a percentage, how much of this isotope will contribute to the mass of the BG atom. So I will do the first one with you. The other two you need to do on your own. And the directions in number two tell us that in order to calculate the percent abundance of each isotope, you need to divide the number of atoms of each isotope by the total number of atoms and then multiply that result by 100. Again, you're going to type in all your work here and make sure in this case, our percentages are rounded to the tenths place. So here we go. Let's do this one together. Now we have to take <clears throat> the number of atoms for isotope number one, our total number of atoms for that specific isotope was 70. So we had 70 atoms. Why is everything underlined? 70 atoms. And we're going to divide that by the total number of atoms. So when we had all the isotopes counted, we added them together to get a total of 137 atoms. And this is going to come out to be 0 0.510. And then remember, we need to multiply this number times 100 to get a percentage. And so this would tell us that BG isotope number one makes up 51.0% of the BG atom atomic mass. That is more than half of the mass comes from this one isotope. Now I would like you to calculate isotope number two's percent abundance and number three's percent abundance. 
And if you want to check your math to make sure that everything comes out right, all three of these percentages should add up to about 100%. If they don't, now once you have this data table completed and your work shown below, you're able to move on to the next slide where we need to calculate the average atomic mass. The average atomic mass is a weighted average, which means each, each isotope contributes a certain percentage of mass to the atomic mass, which would then be what is listed on the periodic table. So here we have that you're going to follow in order to calculate your average atomic mass for the BG atom. Now it probably looks a little scary for an equation, but it's not. I'm going to set up this first part of the equation for you using BG isotope 1. Then you can set up this part of the equation for BG isotope 2 and this part of the equation for BG isotope 3. Once we have each of those sections calculated, you then simply add the three sections together to come up with your total mass. Now, relative abundance. Remember on the last slide where you calculated that percentage? So for BG isotope 1, the percent abundance was 51%. I simply am going to divide that back by 100, or move your decimal two places to the left, to get our relative abundance. So our relative abundance, okay, that number that has been taken out of a percentage, times that average mass for that isotope is what is going to go into this first set of parentheses. And then in the second, and the third set, you do the same exact thing, but for isotope 2 and isotope 3. So here we are. Let's set this up. I'm going to go, parenthesis, I'm going to increase my font here just to be obnoxiously, make a point here. So here I go. Where was I? There we are. So open parenthesis, the relative abundance Okay, for isotope 1, if I go back to this slide, when we calculated our percent abundance here, the relative abundance is the number you got before you multiplied it by 100 to get a percentage. So for BG isotope 1, that's going to be 0 0.510. So here I go. My relative abundance for isotope 1 was 0 0.510. And then I am simply going to multiply that times the average mass, the average mass for that particular isotope, which we had calculated again in this slide, the average mass for BG isotope 1 was this 0 0.30 grams. And so I'm going to say I'm multiplying this relative mass times a 0 0.30, okay, and then that will inevitably be added to whatever you fill in for isotope 2 plus whatever you fill in for isotope 3, and then once all of these are added together, it will tell you what our weighted average atomic mass is for our BG element. It's so exciting. Okay. So again, in order for this to give me a specific number that tells me how much mass this one isotope contributes, I multiply 0 0.510 times 0 0.30, and I am going to get... Dun, 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 what do I get? I get 0 0.153 grams. This one isotope will contribute 0 0.153 grams of mass to the overall end-all 
average atomic mass. I would like you now to fill in the other two pieces here and then add all three of the numbers that you should be coming up with together. Good luck. When you finish, try answering the final number four question on your own.